Praise, hallelujah. We worship you, praise you, we glorify you, we magnify your holy name. Your name is to be praised from the uprising of the sun to the going down of the same. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good. All the time, the Lord is good. He is, great, is greatly to be praised. From the uprising of the sun to the going down of the same, we praise the Lord, the mighty God of Jacob. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The altogether lovely, the bright and morning star, the lily of the valley. Hallelujah. We just want to talk about Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. The man who came to earth to die and to save us Hallelujah. from sin. We praise his name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He died that we may live. He gave his life for us and we thank him. Every day of the week we thank him. Every day of the week we praise him. Every day, you know, the, the writer says from the uprising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Hallelujah. So we are praising God. We are worshiping God. We are glorifying God. You know, when we think of some one writer says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he has done for me, my soul cry out, hallelujah. Praise God for saving me, hallelujah. Oh, and when we think of the goodness of Jesus and the sacrifice, the great sacrifice that Jesus made to save us and to redeem us, we should be rejoicing in God, in the Lord, because his blood, one writer says, his blood reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the cleansing blood. In the old days, it was the blood of goats and sheep and um, um, sacrifice, turtle dove, various sacrifice was made on the altar. But now, because of Jesus, hallelujah, sacrifice of his own blood, we are free from sin. We are free. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God, we are free. Thank you, Jesus. And now, to, to, tonight, I want to talk about the death of the apostles. The death of the apostles. How did they die, those men that Jesus called to follow him, Peter, James, and John, the fishermen, and how did they die? You know, when we think about the commitment that these men had to the gospel, to spreading of the gospel, yes. and how they, they were determined to take the word of God throughout all the world, to the four corners of the world, and they were determined to follow the word of God, which he said, go ye throughout all the world and preach the gospel, teaching men to obey all things, baptizing them in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So it was a commission that Jesus gave to his disciples who became apostles, and they were committed. And we want to talk about these uh these disciples, the apostles, how they died, you know? And you know, we're looking at it and say, uh, they were so committed in their belief, in their faith, in their steadfastness. Yes. And uh, we, we look at the first um the first martyr, it was Stephen, you know, and Stephen was stoned to death because he uphold the gospel and you know if we think about Stephen and his commitment mm -hmm. you know and um, if we read um, from Acts of the Apostles and chapter 7 it says um, from verse 51 it tells us how Stephen um, met his death you know and so Stephen was brought before the priests and he had to declare himself why is he preaching this gospel? 
And the, when Stephen started to explain his understanding of the gospel and how he, he started to talk from God called Abraham and made a promise to Abraham and he went down to, when he was trying to defend himself before the high priest, declare himself before the high priest, he said he mentioned how the children of Israel was in Egypt and how God brought them out of Egypt. And all the things he tried to relate the word of God from, you know, from the beginning on to the time of Jesus. And then, you know, in verse 51 of um, Acts of the Apostles 7, you know, Stephen said in the council of the high priests, because you can imagine he was just an apostle, but he was bold. And, you know, because he had the Holy Ghost, he had the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost he had gave him boldness. So he was not afraid to say what the, the, the Spirit uh, uh, unctioned him to say. And, 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 and Stephen, before he was stoned, he uses these words when he declare himself, how he understand the gospel, how he understand how Jesus came to fulfill um, the, the, the prophecy that Isaiah spoke about and he said it to them before the high priest Stephen said in verse 51 Acts of the Apostles 7 verse 51 uh, Stephen said ye stiff naked uncircumcised in, in heart and ear he do, he do always resist the Holy Ghost as, the, as your father did so do he which the prophet have not, which of the prophet have not the father persecute, and they have slain them and slew before the coming of the just one. So he was just saying, how many of the prophets has your father slain, and you and even before the coming of the just one, which was Jesus, and whom he have been now the betrayers and murderers who has received the law by the disposition of angel angels and have not kept them so stephen stood before the high priest and you know in those days the high priest was revered you know and they they respected him and you know stephen was calling him the high priest plus those who were listening stiff naked uncircumcised in heart and ear and you can imagine the anger that Stephen brought upon, uh, brought upon, brought to those people who heard him, and so, the, in in Acts of the Apostles seven verse fifty four, it says, "When they heard these things, when they heard Philip declaring this Christ and what how they crucify a just man, and when they heard it, it, it says, when they heard these things, they were cut in the cut to the heart." And they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he being full of the Holy Ghost. You know, the Holy Ghost is important because the Holy Ghost gives us boldness. The Holy Ghost makes us fearless. The Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit make us can to say whatever the Spirit put on our heart. And this was it in the case of Stephen. He was fearless. You know, he said. He was being full of the Holy Ghost, looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. And they cried with a loud voice and stopped their ears and run upon him with one accord. So, you know, when we think about Stephen and the boldness that God gave Stephen to declare his word, because, you know, the word of God must go forth and it must be declared. Amen. And nothing can stop the word of God. And when we are filled and in the anointing with the Spirit of God, we speak what the Spirit tells us. And so the Spirit gave Stephen the, up, the unction to speak boldly before the high priest. And he said that when they, when they were so angry and came upon him, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice 
and stop their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stone him. Amen. When we think about the commitment of Stephen and the boldness that God gave him to declare the word of God, to declare the truth and become a witness for God, and God gave him that unction to speak even before the high priest. And they were angry, the mob, they angry, and they came upon him, took him out of the city, as the word says. They took him out of the city and they stoned him. They stoned him for declaring who Jesus was. They stoned him for declaring the power of God. They stoned him for declaring that Jesus came to save the world. They stoned him for declaring that Jesus was the Son of God. And they stoned him. And when they stoned him, and they said they laid, the witness laid their clothes at the feet of a young man whose name was Saul. So you see this Saul who we talk about who God met upon the road of Damascus when he was going to uh, persecute the church. He was going down to um, Syria. He was going down to get a letter from uh, to Damascus to get a letter from the high priest to bound anyone who talk about Jesus. So how did those people, how did those Christians suffer because of lifting up and talking about Jesus? But this man Saul, he held their coat, their coat fell at his feet when they stoned Stephen. So Saul was in league with them when they stoned Stephen. But God had his mark on Saul, who later was called Paul. And they lay their clothes at his feet, the feet of one whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen. They stoned him. They threw stones upon him, calling up on God, saying, Lord, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin upon their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Praise God. So this is how the first martyr, the first man who died for the name of Jesus. The first man who died for the gospel, Stephen, how he died proclaiming the word of God. So as children of God, people of God, we must be bold. Yes. We must be bold speaking the word of God. We must be bold. Stephen was bold. Stephen was fearless. And while they stoned him, they took him out of the city and they stoned him. And he did not deny Jesus. All those stones fallen upon him. He did not deny Jesus. Hallelujah. But he kept the faith. And he saw heavens open. Praise and he God. saw the Son of Man. Can you imagine all those stones hitting him? But yet he saw Jesus standing at the right Amen. hand of God. Oh, praise God. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing when you die for your faith, when you, when you declare who you believe, when you stand um, steadfast, unwaving, and standing upon the truth, and declare, thus saith the Lord. Amen. So he died, he laid, they said he fell asleep. Oh, praise the Lord. He fell asleep in the arms of Jesus. Oh, praise God. So, we see many were persecuted. Now, this is how Stephen died, declaring the word of God. And when we think about James, you know, when we think about James, uh, the brother of, uh, brother of Jesus, who was, st who was stoned. James was stoned to death as well as Stephen. Um, and if we look at Acts of the Apostle, um, chapter uh, 12, and from verse 1 we read uh, we read from verse 1 when it says now about the time that Herod the king stretched forth his hands 
to vex certain of the church. So the church was so persecuted in those days. The church was under persecution. The church was like they were like treated like aliens by the king, by the by by, by the Romans, which was in charge at that time. They stretched out their hands towards to vex the church. It's even like a time we're in now when we see that the church is put one side and not counted, you know. Uh, and so Herod stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. So the, he, he killed James. James was the brother of John with the sword. You know, and um, one, one, one writer said that he was stoned, and then another writer said he killed him with the sword. And he said, and, he, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter. So the Jews was rejoicing when James, uh, the, the disciple, a uh, uh, brother of James, was killed. They were rejoicing. And then the Bible says he came unto his own and his own received him not. And because they saw it pleased the Jews, they, they proceeded further to take Peter. So it was pleasing to the Jews. It was pleasing to the public that these that the church was being persecuted. It was pleasing to the public that, that you know, the Christians were killed and they took Peter. And then the days was of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, when he took Peter, he put him in prison. You know, Peter was, you know, one of the, uh, um, one of the forward disciples of Jesus, one of the more, um, um, arguing, um, one of the disciples who were always there beside Jesus, who was standing up for Jesus. Peter was the one who told Jesus, I will die for you. And Jesus said to Peter, before the cock crow twice, you shall deny me twice. And so it was. But Peter really loved the Lord and his intention was that he would die for the Lord. But at that time, he was not yet received the Spirit of the Holy Ghost because he did not receive the Spirit of the Holy Ghost until the day of Pentecost, which was after Jesus died and ascended to heaven, to the Father. So Herod took Peter, apprehend him, put him in prison and deliver him to the quadrant so quadrant of soldiers to keep him. The quarter notion of soldiers to keep him intended after Easter to bring him before the people. So they were going to kill Peter but you know something what we learn from this is that nothing happens until God is ready. That's right. Peter, Peter later died and Peter later died willingly gave his life for the gospel. But at this time, God was not ready. Peter's Peter work was not completed. So God, Amen. do not take us away until our work is completed. And so they delivered Peter in prison with the soldiers to keep him, intended to bring him out forth to the people after Easter. But the Bible tells us that prayer... Peter, they were, Peter, Peter, therefore, were kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, now sometimes we have to see the power. Uh, there is power in praying. You know, Amen. when the brethren realized that Herod killed James and wanted to kill Peter, you know, they had to go down and pray. And pray earnestly, join prayer, bring their hearts and mind together, talk to God. And they talk to God about Peter. Lord, they prayed without ceasing, without stopping. They prayed for Peter. They reach out to God for Peter because they said, but Father, he is in prison. Lord, loose him, loose him. And, you know, while they prayed, you know, so the Bible says, when Herod would have bought him the same night. So when they were about to take him out of prison and maybe to kill him, you know, the same night, the Bible says Peter was sleeping. He was in prison, but he was sleeping between two soldiers bound with chains. 
and the keeper therefore therefore the door of the of the prison and behold the angels of the Lord came and a light shine in the prison praise God you know when you're in prison it's a dark place when you see light shine there's a hope they know that God is working so he was there in prison chained bound and chained between two soldiers and the Bible, Bible says God sent his angel virgin when we pray believe God believe God that God is going to work and God will work Amen. and these people this virgin was praying earnestly without ceasing to God they prayed and God sent his angel down and the two soldiers that kept him and behold the angel came upon him and a light shine in prison and smote Peter touch him touch Peter while he was in prison smote Peter and behold the angel came down and light shined and smote Peter on the side and arise him up and raise him up saying so immediately the angel came he was loose all the chains were gone and the angel says arise rise him up saying arise up quickly and his chains his chains fell off his hands oh boy you know when i hear these things i think how awesome god is how powerful God is, you know. He sent his angels. He sent his angels down for Peter. And the light shone. And everything was all right. The chains fell from his hands. And the angel said, Gird up. Gird up, man. Bind on your sandals. Put on your sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garments about thee and follow me. Oh, praise Amen. God. So God sent his... You see, when we pray to God, God will send his angel. Yes. God will send his Hallelujah. angel. When we pray to God earnestly, Hallelujah. God will send his angels. And God sent his angel because he was not ready for Peter. Peter had his work to do. He needed Peter to go to the Gentile. He needed Peter to go to Cornelius. He needed Peter to do many other things. He needed Peter to heal and show the power of the Holy Ghost. He needed yeah. Peter to do so many things. So he was not ready for Peter, even though Herod the king had him in prison, chained, and was willing to take him out after Easter to kill him. But he, God said no. So when the devil says yes, God says no. Oh, praise God. And cast a garment about thee and follow me. And he went out. Peter went out after the angel and followed him. And wisted not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he had a vision. Oh, praise God. Sometimes when God ready for, to work for us, we are thinking we have having a vision. We think we're having a dream. Because God has a way of working so powerful, so awesome, that we can't, we, 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 beyond our thought, beyond our belief, beyond our expectation. And, and Peter had something beyond his expectation. He he was there he loved the Lord he was there holding on to Jesus praising Jesus worshiping him in his heart although he was sleeping but his heart was fixed upon God and he would say come what may in his heart he was saying come what may I love the Lord and God saw his heart and God sent his angels to deliver him and the angel came the light shone his chain fell off this God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This God never changed. This God is always the same. He's up the potent, all powerful. He can do anything. He can do anything. Anything. And when it came to pass, the Bible says, talk about Acts of the Apostles 12. And when it came to pass on the second ward that they came, the iron gates that lead to the city. The iron gate that lead to the city where he was kept, which opened them on their own accord. So 
<laughs> so it become automatic. The, the gate that held him in opened automatically because God was in charge. Amen. The gates opened on its own accord, the Bible says. Mm. And they went out. The angel, Peter following the angel, they went out on the street. Amen. And fought with the angels depart. Oh, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So the Lord leave us in a place of safety. Mm -hmm. Out of the gates. Out of danger. Mm -hmm. Out of trouble. Okay. Out of fear. Out of despair. Hallelujah. And he, the angel departed from him. And now Peter, when Peter found himself alone, when Peter came to himself, the Bible says, Peter was now come to himself and said, Now I know of a surety. Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel Amen. and has delivered me out of the hand of hell and the expectation of the Jews. Amen. Oh, praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Yes, Brethren, prayer is powerful. Prayer is connected with God. Amen. Prayer is connected with the omnipotent God who has all power. Prayer is connection. It's like you have, you, you need your electricity. It has to come from a source. And when you connect to the source, you have, you have power. Yes. And so they, they, when they saw Peter in prison, the brethren, they prayed for him earnestly. And God heard. God yes. sent his angel, deliver him. The light shone in the prison. His chain fell off. Amen. So nothing happened to us until God is ready. Nothing happened to any child of God before God is ready. Ready. So we see that Amen. Peter continued on his journey because God was not finished with him. And you know, if we read the story, because Peter came and knocked on the door of those that were praying because they have keeping prayer meeting, calling upon God. So God deliver Peter, God deliver him. Lord help him, Lord, Lord loose him, Lord, Lord let not Harold have his way. Let not Harold have his way with this with your son. And God heard. And while they were yet praying, the Bible says Peter came and knocked on the door of the gate and the damsel came out named ha ha Rhoda and when she saw it she was shocked because God answer prayer mm -hmm. God here and answer prayer but we're talking about uh, the sacrifice that these men of God made for the gospel and sometimes the, the least little thing that happened to us we are wondering, wondering, wondering if God loves us, if God cares for us. The least little thing, something happened to us, misfortune, something or uh, something we think, we wonder if God loves us. But they that live godly in Christ, the Bible says, will suffer persecution. Life will not. That's why Jesus said, he that will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his, take up his cross and follow me. Follow me, take up your cross, take up your responsibility, deny yourself, and God will work it out. So we see how uh, James died, and they wanted to kill Peter, but God wasn't ready for Peter. Timothy, also another uh, disciple, apostle of Christ. He, um, Paul, Paul was also an apostle of Christ. And we see Paul, how Paul died. Paul was not fearful. We know about the story about Paul, how Paul was converted. Paul was um, persecuting the Christians because he did not realize that Jesus came to fulfill um, the, 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 the scriptures. So Paul, he, he was a learned man. He was taught at the feet of Gamaliel, the, the doctor of law. So he was learned in the scripture and in all the words of, of Moses. And he knew the scripture. But he did not realize that Jesus came to fulfill the scripture. So because of Jesus, they, you know, they thought that Jesus was an imposter. And so they had to believe in the laws of Moses. But Jesus came for, to fulfill that. In the days of Moses, the law was that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Mm. 
But when Jesus come, Jesus fulfilled that law. You know, the law was like a schoolmaster leading us to grace. But Jesus came to give us grace. So we, we no longer say an eye for an eye. Revenge is not in the heart, should not be in the heart of a man in this time because we are in the dispensation of grace where mercy pleaded. And that's why Stephen, even though when Stephen was being stoned, and you can imagine that someone is hitting you without stoning you, and you know, they were throwing stone upon him, and you know, <laughs> you know, you no know, one can imagine how it feels to have stone, but because God was with him, God reduced the suffering that he has suffered. And that because of that, he could say, Lord, he cried out, the Bible says. Stephen, when he was, 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 about to fall asleep, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin upon them. Lay not this sin upon them. So, so this is what grace, this was the dispensation that we are in now. We are in a dispensation of grace where we are taught to forgive. Because God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. So whatever it is, we are taught to forgive. And the Bible says, if we do not forgive, then God will not forgive us. So forgiveness, and so that is where grace come in. But Paul did not realize that grace came to fulfill the law. And so he persecuted the church until God met him, met him on the road of Damascus, knocked him off his horse. And he became blind. And he heard a voice said, Saul, Saul. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, who thou persecuted. So Jesus was already ascended into heaven. And it was just his disciples and his apostles, his disciples and his followers that were persecuted by Paul. But the voice said, I am Jesus, who thou persecuted. So if we persecute a child of God, we are persecuting Jesus. So Paul realized and he said go into and I will command and I ask to pray for you and receive your sight and so Paul was then converted and was baptized and became a new man Paul said I'm a new creation I'm a brand new man all things are passed away I'm born again so Paul became a brand new man but Paul died in Rome, according to, according to history, Paul died in Rome. He, Paul and Peter died in Rome. Um, during the persecution of Emperor, Emperor Nero, Paul was beheaded. So Paul was actually, he died in Rome for the gospel. He died for the gospel. But before he died, he said to Timothy, he wrote a letter, he was in prison in Rome, and he wrote a letter telling Timothy, and this was the word of Paul to Timothy before he died. I charge thee therefore, first, second Timothy 4, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who judge, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing of his kingdom. I charge you, Timothy, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Rebuke, reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That is what Paul said to Timothy. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own loss will they heap unto themselves teachers having itchy ears, itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth unto fable. But be thou in all things, endure affliction, affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof, proof of your ministry. So Paul knew that they were going to kill him. They, he knew. And so he told Timothy, his son in the gospel, to be steadfast, to preach the gospel, to preach the word, to be instant, in season, out of season. 
and to rebuke and exhort with long suffering and doctrine. So, you know, he wanted Timothy to carry on where he left off because he knew now he's ready to go. And he was not, Paul was not afraid to die. He was not afraid to die. How do I know? Paul was not afraid to die. In 2 Timothy 4 verse 6, Paul said, same epistle to Timothy, for I am now ready to be offered. I am ready to die. I am ready to go. Hallelujah. I am ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I'm going to go. I'm not going to die a natural death. I'm going to be killed. But I'm holding and I'm telling you, hold on. I'm telling you to preach the word. Continue where I've left off. Because I'm ready to be offered. I'm going to leave. And he was not afraid to leave. He said, I have fought a good fight. Amen. I have finished my course. Yes. Now, he's fought a good fight. Paul has fought a good fight. He has finished his course. He's done what God wanted him to do. So he was ready to go. And so it is. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept. I have kept the faith. Amen. Keep the faith. Amen. I have kept the faith. Paul was so assured. You know, you know, one of the things that as children of God, we have to have assurance. Assurance that we are doing what God wants us to do. Yes. We have to have assurance that we have lived the life that God wanted us to live. We have we need to have assurance that we have followed the first step that Jesus wants us to follow. We want we have to have the assurance that we are walking in the footstep of Jesus. But he, Paul had that confidence. He said, I am ready, ready, ready. I am ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Amen. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. Henceforth, this is the good part. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, Amen. which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful testimony. And brethren, when we see that we are so, when we, when, we, when we serve in God, we must serve God with confidence. Like Paul was so confident in what he was saying. He was not dribbling. He was not wavering. But he was steadfast. He was steadfast. He was unremovable. And he was always abounding in the works of of the Lord. Amen. Rebuke all long suffering and doctrine because he said the time will come when they, when they, they will not endure sound doctrine. So even though Paul was imprisoned in Rome and knew he was going to die, he was yet encouraging his son Timothy in the doctrine said you continue we are, continue because he said I am now ready in verse 6 2 Timothy 4 Verse 6, he said, I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. You know, he was ready. You know, I am ready to be offered. They're going to come and take my life. So, Paul was not fearful of death. He was not fearful of death. He said, I'm ready. I have, he said, I fought a good fight. I have fought. I have declared the word of God. I have not compromised with the word of God. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have done. Now you see with it, when he says I have finished my course, he knows that he's done everything that God wanted him to do. Amen. When you finish your course, you have done everything. You have done from A to Z, A to Z. 
and he knew that he finished his course. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. What is there left for me to do? I have kept the faith. Keeping the faith, brethren. Keep the faith. The faith is what make us. The faith is what make us children of God. Because we are children of God through faith. Because we know our God, we trust our God, we serve our God, we obey our God. So we can keep the faith. So he's saying, I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. I have fought a good fight. And when you finish your course, I mean, you, even if you do a natural examination and you finish, you're satisfied that I have done what was what I was to do. I have I've, I have dot all the eyes and I've crossed all the T's. I am, and that's what we need. We need to be confident that we are we are doing what God wants us to do. I have finished my I've kept the faith. And then he go on to say, henceforth, henceforth, there is laid up a crown of righteousness. A crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, a crown. You know when you have a crown, it's an honorable thing. And a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day. And he went on to say, not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Oh, praise God. So when we love God, God take note. When we serve God, God take note. When we, when we, when we serve God and worship God and praise God and give him honor and praise, God take note. Come Lord Jesus, come. You see what, what is happening today, my brethren, what is happening around the world today. You see what is happening in South Africa. You see what is happening in South Africa. It's, it's hell. It's hell on earth. You see what is going on down in South Africa. It's hell on earth. You see what happened in Germany. The flooding. People how I see houses floating on the water, washed away. These are signs. You see what happened in Haiti. How they kill the very president of the country, eleven million people, the president of eleven million people, they kill him. You see what's happening in Canada? We see in Canada, there are bushfires. A whole city. People have to run. These are signs. Yes. These are signs. And it's a warning to the world what is to come. And we, children of God, this is why we, we can't set our affection on things on this earth anymore. If you're making plans for five years, ten years from now, forget it. If you're making plans to have some big house somewhere up, somewhere on the hill or something or somewhere, are you making some big plans? Forget it. We can see that it's in the last days we're into. Signs are telling us. There's trouble everywhere. Look what's happening in, in Cuba. And that's just the least. Oh, praise God. Let us hold on, brethren. Let us look to God. Let us look to Jesus. The Bible says, when you see all these things, look up. Look up. Look up. Don't look down. Look up. For your redemption, draw it now. It's time for us. To even cling, cling even more closer to Jesus. To draw closer to Him. Now. Now is the time. Hallelujah. We don't know what's going to happen next year. We don't even know what's going to happen at the end of this year. Wow. But, and this is not scaremongering. This is just telling us that it's time for us to set our affection 
on things above. Amen. Because even in those days, Paul's affection, affection was on things above. He wanted to please the Lord. He wanted to serve the Lord. And he did. And he preached. And he preached. And even one time they was trying to kill him while he was preaching. And the Bible said they had to let him down in a basket to the window to save his life. Because God wasn't ready for him yet then either. But at this stage, we can see that God had prepared his mind. And he said, I am now ready to be offered. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So we see how Paul was ready to go when God was ready for him. And he knew where he was going. He knew that God had prepared for him. A crown of righteousness. You know the righteous judge has prepared for him a crown of righteousness. And so Paul died in Rome. Praise the Lord. But he did not deny Jesus. And many of the apostles who died, they died standing upon the word of God. They stand they died trusting in God. And we see uh, this Philip. Philip was a great apostle because the Bible tells us that um, in Acts of the Apostles, we see how Philip, in Acts of the Apostles, it tells us the power and the anointing that Philip had. When Philip, when the gospel was preached, and if I just read this part of Acts of the Apostles, talk about Philip. Um, so Philip suffered death. Um, Philip had a powerful ministry in Cartridge, North Africa, and then in Asia Minor, where he, con the Bible says, the, the, the history tells us that Philip converted the wife, the wife of a Roman, Procosal. In retaliation, the Procosal had Philip arrested and cruelly put to death. So Philip lost, get, died because he stand up on the word of God. And so he was put to death in a cruel manner. And if you read Acts of the Apostle, how the anointing of God was upon Philip. Acts of the Apostle 8, it says, when Saul was consult, consulting unto his death, that was the death of um. Uh, Stephen at that time there was great persecution against the church which was in at Jerusalem and they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of Judea and Samaria except the apostles and the devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him as for Saul he made now this Saul became Paul we just spoke about him, how he said, because God had a job for him and God knew him and God wanted to use him and which God did use him. It says, and for Saul, this same Saul, he made a havoc of the church, entered into every house and hailing, hauling men and women, committed them to prison. So Saul at that time was really a pain in the back, a pain, a pain, it caused havoc upon the church, but God had his mark upon him, but going on to Stephen, the Bible says, um, the church in Jerusalem and Samaria, so it says, therefore, Acts of Apostle 8, therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down into the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. So we see that God anointed Philip to have a powerful ministry. The powerful ministry is that as he spoke his mouth, people give heed and people heard and people were changed, people were converted. 
And he said, yeah, hearing and seeing the miracle. And not only that he was speaking, but he was doing the work because God was with him. The Holy Ghost was with him. Jesus does there with him, giving him power. Because the Bible says, he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And we saw that the Holy Ghost was upon Philip in a mighty way. But the Bible says, he says, for unclean spirit, crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed of, with them, and many taken with palsy, and that were lame, were healed. And there was a great cry in that city. Oh, praise the Lord. That's what you call a revival, because the Holy Ghost was there, and there was a revival in, in Samaria when Philip went down there to preach the word and the presence of God was hidden with him in a mighty way that not only he is preaching but the power that God gave him that he could cast out unclean spirit with and they crying with a loud voice and many were possessed of them they were healed that's the power of God and a certain man named Simon so Simon was um, I think he was a sorcerer. Simon thought laying on hands of the person and the Holy Ghost was given. Simon offered the apostles money for the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost cannot be bought. And Simon saw through laying of hands of the apostles the Holy Ghost was given. And he offered them money saying, Give me also this power that whosoever I lay my hands on may receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. See? Come by the Holy Ghost. God has to give it to us. But we see that Philip, because Philip was under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and God used him. But he died, and the history tells us he was arrested, and he died by the Romans, and died a cruel death. But he died trusting in the Lord. He died in the work of the Lord, and he persuaded many. He persuaded many to serve the Lord. And I think Philip could say, like Paul, I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid a up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord shall give me on that day, and not only to me, but unto all them that love. Is appearing. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, when we serve God, it is something. It is wonderful. Then we went on and we saw Bartholomew. Bartholomew was, what well, I think he was also called Nathaniel. Nathaniel. In Acts. In John chapter 21, verse 1 to 8, it tells us about Jesus calling all his disciples. And after these things, Jesus showed himself again to his disciples at the Sea, sea of Tiberia. And on his wise showed himself. There were together Simon, Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel of Canaan in Galilee, the son of Zebedee. Now this was also Nathaniel, which was called Bartanimus. And Bartanimus, the Bible tells, the history tells us, he had widespread missionary travel attributed to him by his tradition. So he traveled to India with Thomas, and back to Armenia, and also to Ethiopia, and Southern Arabia. There are various accounts of how he met his death as a Martha for the Gospel. 
But you see, Bartanimus, there hasn't been much writing about him, but he traveled all over to preach the gospel. India, Armenia, Ethiopia, and Southern Arabia. And he was carrying the word of God because Jesus commissioned him as he commissioned the other, go in through all the world and preach the gospel. Teaching, pre-baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. He had a commitment, Bartholomew's, or Nathaniel, and he died a martyr, standing upon the word of God. And I could hear him say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I could hear him say, I am ready to be offered. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Amen. Henceforth there is laid upon me a crown of righteousness, who the Lord shall give me in that day. The, the apostles, they were not afraid to die. And when you think about death, we all have to die. That's right. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. And after death the judgment. Everybody must die. We must all die. If Jesus dies, everyone will die. We all die. So death is a surety. And it's not something we should fear. If we're in Christ, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. So God has, Jesus has made a promise. Death is not for the child of God. We just transcend. We just transcend from death to life. From this life to eternity. From this terrestrial life to a celestial life. From this finite life to an infinite life. And it is what we have to prepare ourselves for. We are here in the dressing room preparing ourselves for this place that Jesus said he's going to prepare for us. We have to prepare ourselves. And the Bible says Jesus is coming for the church. The church. What is the church? The church. Jesus told Peter when he came to the coast of Caesarea, whom does man say that I am? Whom do ye say that I am? And, G and Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. So, the fact that we realize that Jesus is the Lord and He is God and God is in Him and He's in God and they're one is a confession that only a child of God can make through the Spirit of God. So Peter made that confession and Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And he went on to say, Upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell, hallelujah, hallelujah, the gates of hell, oh glory be to God, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. So not principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, nothing can prevail against the church. And you know what? We are the church. Right. We are the church. Songwriter says we are the church of the living God and the gates of hell can never prevail. Build upon the rock. What is the rock? Who is the rock? Jesus is the rock. So Bartholomew's he carried the gospel. He preached the gospel. We all fear for his life. Because you know when this life goes, there's a better life. There's a greater life. And sometimes, you know, I, I think the, the, the apostles and the disciples, I think they think of the power 
of the resurrection. I think that they think about the power of living again in an unlimited life, in a life without fear, without care, a world of peace, a blissful world of joy, unspeakable and full of glory. And if you think about those things, you think, boy, I can't wait to get there. Paul said before, I have a mind to go and a mind to stay. But he said, for me to stay, it's only profitable for you that I stay, not for me. And when we think about it for us, as true children of God, it is profitable for us, maybe for our loved ones, to continue to pray them into the kingdom. That is the profit that we have, that we may say, oh, I will stay rather than go. I may want to pray my loved ones into the kingdom. But apart from that, there's nothing here for a child of God. There's nothing here about to do the work of God. So we see how Bartholomew's met his death. And James, the son of Avius, is one of the least three James referred to in the New Testament. There is some confusion to which is which. But James is reckoned to have ministers in Syria. The Jewish historian Josias reported that he was stoned and chubbed, chubbed to death. Awesome. So James, the same James, which I think were the epistles of James telling us about, you know, how the rich man will perish, says he ministers ministered in Syria and he reported he was stoned to death. So many of the apostles were stoned to death. Some of them were fled, one of them was fled to death. Um, we saw that Peter also died, um, crucified. Peter was crucified um, when he, he was in Rome. And he said, um, both Peter and Paul, both Paul and Peter was martyred in Rome, 66 AD, during the persecution under Emperor Nero. Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified. Um, Peter was crucified upside down at his request. Because Peter said, he said he feel, he did not feel he was worthy to die in the same manner as the save of the Lord. Oh praise God. So he was he was ready to be offered. He was ready to be crucified. And he made a request, I am not worthy to be crucified like my master. I am not worthy to be crucified as the Lord, crucify me upside down. Oh, praise God. A Peter was a powerful man of God. He trusted in God. He loved God. And when we love God, we say, oh, I'm not worthy to die like him. Don't let me crucify like my Lord. Turn me upside down. Crucify me upside down. Because Peter realized what this world was. And for us as children of God, we need to realize what this world is and what this world... The Bible says, if we love this world, the love of God is not in us. We can't love this world. What is there in this world that we should love? Peter said that the, the, it's a one of us writing. Peter said this light of fiction, fiction, this light of fiction that we suffer. No doubt that Peter suffered before he was crucified. No doubt that Peter was, cru was persecuted 
before he was crucified. No doubt that he was had all sort of um, all sort of things, you know, happening to him before he was crucified. Because he talked about the light of fiction, fiction. So he had affliction, but he called this affliction. And we, as children of God, who suffer affliction, we, we it, it seems to be hard on us now. Sometimes we go through some hard things. Sometimes we have tears. Sometimes we are broken. Sometimes our heart is broken by reason of of, of the enemy, of the fight. Because once once we name the name of Jesus, the devil comes down on us. Once we name the name of Jesus, the devil has targeted us. But Peter knew that whatever the devil had to throw at him, he knew it was worth it. Because he said it's light affliction that we now suffer with eternal greater the glory that is to be revealed is greater we can't imagine the glory that we is to be revealed unto the children of god we can't imagine the joy and the peace that awaits the children of god you know the bible says not even the sun shall find shall shall come upon us because in heaven Jesus is the light. We don't have to worry about being too hot because right now it's so hot. I don't know where you are, but right now the temperature is quite hot, quite warm. True. And sometimes you go some places and the temperature is quite cold. But in heaven there's no hot or cold. Jesus is the light. Oh, praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Praise His holy name. When we think about heaven, brethren, we should want to go to heaven right now. We should, I tell you something as children of God. When we think about heaven, we should say, Lord, oh Lord, I, I can't wait. Amen. Somebody says, I can't wait to see Him face to face. I can't wait to see Jesus face to face. Has that ever come into your mind that even what's going on around us, that we just say, boy, I can't wait to see Jesus face to face. The songwriter says, just a glimpse of Jesus in glory with all, with all the toils of earth we pay. Just a glimpse. Just a glimpse of Jesus. Oh, praise God. Just a glimpse of Jesus remove all the cares. Just a glimpse of Jesus remove all the fears. Just a glimpse of Jesus make us feel awesomely powerful. And that's why, that's why Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. We can do all things. But we can do all things through Christ. Hallelujah. Because He's our strength. Yes, He is. He is our wisdom. He's our He's everything. Yeah. He's our director. Yes. He's our protector. He's our guide. We can do all things through Christ. And all the apostles. You see, Jesus called all the apostles one by one and he called 12 12 disciples he called them one by one and he called 12 and he said one of them is a devil so even though he knew one of them was a devil he still called him because you know um we sang a song today that um, someone sang a song and said, if we did not have problems, we would never know that God could solve them. So problems is here to make us strong. Don't be afraid of problems. Don't be afraid of challenges. 
If the children of Israel did not have challenges when they came out of Egypt, how would they know that God in his power could just divide the Red Sea just like that? Yes. How would they know if they didn't have the problem that they were stuck? They were stuck in one place and the enemy was advancing on their backs and there was no way to go. Amen. And the Red Sea was in front and the mountains on both sides. They could not turn to the rock. They could not turn to the left nor to the right. They were stuck between the rock and a hard place. But if they were not in that predicament, if they were not in that predicament, they would never know the power of God. Amen. So trials is here to make us realize what God can do. Let us not be fearful of, prior, of, of challenges. Let us not be fearful about the hands of the enemy. Let us not be fearful when trouble come upon us. Because we have Jesus. And when we have Jesus, we have everything. One writer says, take the entire world. Take the entire world. North, South, East and West. Take Russia, take China, take India. Take Africa. Take you up. Take everything. But give me Jesus. Amen. Yes. And Amen. we have to be in that situation, my brethren. We have to be in that situation when we say, take the world. But give me Jesus. You yes. know what? Yes. This world is on its last legs. Very true. And, and every child of God should see spiritually that this world is on its last legs. The Bible tells us of the things that are going to happen in the last days. And I read something in Revelation um, telling us what is going to happen. And if I just can read Revelation 1, 6, 1 to 10 and listen to how this is go. Revelation 6, it says, I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seal and I heard it was like the noise of thunder. One of the bees saying, come and see. And I saw, behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth, conquering unto conquer. Conquering unto conquer. This is what is coming. And when he opened the second seal, I heard the sound, the second bee say, come see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that sat upon him to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another that was given unto him a great sword. Now, brethren, if we know the Word of God, if we know the Word of God, we know that everything, some of the things that John wrote on the Isle of Patmos has come to pass right in front of our eyes. Some is yet to come to pass. But we've seen many of the things that John spoke about on the Isle of Patmos. So in this part, it says, the second beast, the second beast say, Come see, and power was given to take peace from the earth. Any one of us as children of God believe that we are, in, we are going to have peace here on. Please read the word. Anyone who believes that lockdown is going to be lifted and things is going to get back to normal, please read the word of God. Amen. Because these things are coming. They shall kill one another. There was given unto him a great sword. And he went on to say, And when he had opened the third seal, he heard the beast say, Come and see, and beheld a black horse. 
and he that sat upon him had a pair of balance in his hand. And I heard the voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, a measure of barley for a penny, and see that you heard not the oil and the wine. What is coming? This is, this is what God kept John alive because John is the only one of the disciples, apostles, who died a natural death. Out of the twelve disciples, it is said that John was the only one who died a natural death. And God wanted him to bring out these things so we as children of God could prepare ourselves for what is to come. A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see that you heard not the oil and the wine. Terrible times are ahead and I don't mean to be pessimistic but we have to face reality in the word of God and we have to prepare ourselves yes. for what is to come. And when Revelation 6 verse 7 and when he has opened the fourth seal I heard a voice of the fourth beast come and see and look and behold a pale horse and he the name of him that sat upon him was dead hell and hell followed him power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and hunger and death and with the beasts of the earth so these are things that is coming up on the earth brethren these are things that is coming up on the earth so let us let us get close to God let us draw near to him let us get ourselves on the battlefield for the Lord let us Amen. let us be the place that we can say I have fought a good fight I have Let kept the go. faith henceforth is laid upon me a crown of righteousness which the Lord shall give unto me on that day let us fight a good fight Amen. let us kept, keep the faith and henceforth shall be laid upon us a crown of righteousness Hallelujah. A crown Praise of God. righteousness. And that's what we are seeking. That one day we will have a crown of righteousness. Amen. God bless you. I will stop here. And our sister McLean, sister McLean. God bless you. Nice to hear you have you. Yes. And yes, God bless you, woman of God. You are a woman who have been through many things and you have held, the, kept the faith. I know you have kept the faith and that's what God needs people who keep the faith despite all the opposition and the fighting of the enemy. God bless you. I'm going to ask you to just close us in prayer. Um, God bless everyone that are, that are here listening to this teleconference. Sister McLean, close us off in prayer, please. Amen. Praise God. Just want to greet you all, brethren, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good to hear your voice again. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Amen. Bless the Lord, holy and everlasting child. Here we come before your holy presence one more time. Thank you, the Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for being on the right mind. Thank you, Lord, for food on our table. Thank you, Lord, for clothes on our back. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, for the breath that we breathe. Thank you, Lord, for life. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Lord, we thank you tonight. We give you praise, and we give you honor, and we give you adoration. 
Mighty God, we give you to your name. You are worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun and the going down, the same bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for your servant tonight. Mighty God, who have explained the words to us. Lord, we pray that you will continue to inspire him. God, we pray that you will continue to guide his steps as he go. Lord, let your anointing be upon your servant. Mighty God, continue, oh, oh God, to speak to his spirit, Father. Mighty God. Lord, I pray that you will bless his family, bless his children, his wife, mighty God, on all his associates. Mighty God, we thank you tonight for the scripture that has been read. We thank you, Lord God, for the way that your servant, oh God, has explained it to us, Lord. Father, that one day, Father, we are going to leave this unfriendly word. Lord, we are seeing signs and wonders, and these are some of the signs, mighty God, that your coming is near. Help us, Lord, that we will prepare ourselves for your coming. And when you bring the cause of Lord, because we do not know the minute nor the hour when you will put in your appearance. But help us, Lord, to make it right. Help us, Lord, to love our neighbors as how we love ourselves. Help us to treat everyone right. Cover us tonight under your blood. Every listener tonight, mighty God, in this teleconference. Lord God, you know their name. You know the about Hallelujah. them, Lord. You know their uprising and their down sitting. You are acquainted with all their ways. We pray, Almighty God, if anyone is sick tonight, Mighty God, I pray that you will touch such a one tonight from the crown of their head into the sole of their feet. Lord God, we pray that you will provide for your people, mighty God, because you are a provider. You are our miracle working God. You are the light in the darkness. And so, Lord Jesus, we cast the tear on you tonight. Help us, Lord Jesus, that we will not lose sight of you, but help us, Lord Jesus, that we will be in the number when the saints go marching in. And we say as the Apostle Paul, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith, mighty God, and no laid up for, for me a crown of righteousness. And not only for me, but unto them that the love is appeared. Help us, Lord, to fight the, the most fight of faith and to live all an eternal life. Father, we thank you tonight for your blessing. And as we are both mighty God to differ from our various places, or oh God, in our various homes, mighty God, we pray that you will cover us, Lord, in the new blood. Keep us safe from accident, from trouble, oh God, for ambush life, the evil one. Amen. Be with us, Lord, abide with us. Keep us, Lord, as the apple of thine eye. Cover us, my Lord, as we say thank you, Lord, for what you've been doing and what you've done already. We give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, and we give you all the adoration of it. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, my dear sister. God bless you. Continue to be strong in the Lord. God bless you.